What's up, everybody? This is your boy, Tech G, back with another video to help you successfully pass the CompTIA 220 1001 examination. So let's get into it. In this video, you will learn about troubleshooting problems related to motherboards, RAM, CPUs, and power. So let's talk about some common symptoms. So the first one is unexpected shutdown. So typical causes for unexpected shutdowns include the following. You have what is called dead electric shorts, and then you need to make sure everything is secure and properly seated. All RAM cards are properly seated. All case panels are properly screwed in, et cetera, et cetera. The next one you have is called CPU overheating. You need to check fan speed and clean it if it's it is dirty replace any fans if they have failed or if they are turning too slowly do you have the issue of power supply overheating you need to clean the power supply or replace the power supply with a higher wattage rated unit if necessary and then you have power supply failure you need to test the power supply to verify that it is operating properly Another symptom we have is system lockup. So a system lockup, which is also known as a hang or a freeze, this occurs when either a process or system ceases to respond to inputs. A typical example is when a computer's GUI no longer responds to the user typing on the keyboard or moving the mouse. System lockups are typically caused by the corruption of memory contents. To diagnose a system lockup, you want to shut down the system, remove and install memory, and remove dust from the modules, the sockets, the cooling vents, and the fans. If the problem persists, then your memory just might be overheating. You can check the specifications to make sure you have the proper memory installed for the CPU and or the motherboard. If the memory has been overclocked, you need to reset the memory back to factory specifications. Overclocking tends to generate excess heat, which can cause damage to components components and then you need to consider adding additional system cooling. Another common symptom is POST beep codes. Now POST, it stands for power on self-test. The computer POST checks a computer's internal hardware for compatibility and connections before starting the remainder of the boot process. If the computer passes the POST, the computer may give a single beep as it starts and continues the boot process. Now understand that some computers may beep twice while other computers, they just might flash flashing lights. However, if the computer fails the post, the computer will not generate a beep or a beep code telling the user the source of the problem. Beep codes, they do vary by BIOS makers. So you need to check the documentation for the system or motherboard to determine if beeping, blinking, or other reporting methods are used to indicate post problems. Also understand that beep codes can only be heard on systems that have speakers. Now here is a fancy schmancy chart put together showing you common errors and their beep codes. But like I said, each BIOS maker, they have different beep codes. So check your documentation. Another common symptom is blank screens on boot up. So a blank screen on boot up can be caused by a variety of video configurations or cabling problems. And some of which can be caused by motherboard issues. And some of those issues are you have inactive video ports on a system that will cause a blank screen. So be sure to plug displays into an active video port. If you have a display with two or more inputs and it is not configured to use the correct cable, Cable, the display will also be blank. You need to make sure all cables are properly secure. All your DVI, VGAs, HDMI, mini HDMI, display ports, and mini display ports. You need to make sure all of those things are secure. Now, if all of the cables and display input settings are correct, but there still is not an image displaying on the screen, then simply replace the entire display assembly. LCD and LED display modules for laptops and desktops are way cheaper today than they used to be some years ago. There really is no need to go open up a display to fix an inverter or an LCD CCFL or an LED driver board. Just simply replace the display unit. 
Another common symptom is BIOS time and setting resets. So BIOS time and settings reset issues are typically caused by either the CMOS battery on the motherboard or the CMOS chip. If date and time settings or other BIOS settings reset to system defaults or display CMOS corrupted errors, replace the CMOS battery and reset the BIOS settings to correct values. If the CMOS chip on the motherboard is damaged, then the entire motherboard has to be replaced. If other settings such as BIOS passwords have been lost or corrupted, the CMOS contents can be cleared by using a jumper on the motherboard. You need to see your motherboard or system documentation for details about the jumper location and how to properly use it for your particular motherboard. And here is a wonderful picture showing you the location of a CMOS jumper. Another common symptom is attempts to boot to incorrect devices. So in the BIOS settings, the boot sequence determines which drives can be used to start a computer and in what order. Non-bootable drives in the boot sequence will prevent the system from starting. So for example, if a USB drive is listed first and a non-bootable USB drive is plugged in, the system will not start. To remedy this, you need to change the boot order to display the location where the operating system is installed, which is typically on the system hard drive, and then reboot the computer. Another common symptom is continuous reboot. So hardware failures or system instability can cause a computer to reboot continuously. The problem could be the RAM, hard drive, power supply, graphics cards, some external device, or an overheating BIOS issue. Now ways to mitigate this problem are as follows. You can apply troubleshooting in safe mode. You can disable the automatically restart feature. You can disable fast startup. You can uninstall latest installed apps. You can uninstall latest Windows apps. You can update the system drivers. You can reset Windows to the earlier system restore point. You can scan your system for malware, check for hardware issues, and check external devices to see if any of them are causing the restart issues. Another common symptom is no power. So no power to the system can be caused by several issues such as the following power supply failure. You need to use a multimeter or a power supply tester to determine if your power supply has failed. You have incorrect front panel wiring connections to the motherboard. You need to check the markings on the front panel connectors, the motherboard or other motherboard system manuals to determine the correct pinouts and and installation. You can have loose or missing power leads from power supplies. You need to make sure the power supplies from the power supply are connected firmly to the motherboard. The connectors, they will lock in place and you can check for surge suppressors or UPS failure. So you need to replace the defective surge suppressor or UPS unit or replace the battery in the UPS unit. Another common symptom is overheating. So overheating power supplies can cause system failure and possible component damage. And they could be due to any of the following reasons. Reasons such as overloading and overloaded power supply is caused by connecting devices that draw more power than the power supply is designed to handle. You can have fan failure. The fan or fans inside the power supply cool it and are partly responsible for cooling the rest of the computer. If the fan fails, the power supply and the entire computer are at risk of damage. So you need to replace fans if necessary and check your instructions for how to do that. You can have inadequate airflow outside the computer. So if the computer is kept in a confined area without adequate ventilation, power supply failures due to overheating are likely. You can have inadequate airflow inside the system. You need to use cable ties to secure excess ribbon cables and power connectors out of the way of the fan and the power supply. And you need to make sure the case fans and the CPU fans are working correctly. And then you can have a bunch of dirt and dust. You need to use a vacuum cleaner specifically designed for computer use or get a can of air or compressed air to remove dirt and dust from the inside of the system. 
Another common symptom is loud noise. So computers are designed to usually run quietly with a low hum. Loud noises can be an indicator of quite a few issues that you need to check on immediately. So issues such as screeching, rattling, or thumping noises that can indicate that there is a problem or an issue with your fans. If you hear grinding noises, that can indicate that there may be loose connections inside of your case. And if you hear scraping or clicking noises, that could indicate that there may be an issue with your hard disk drive. So you need to be sure to back up all of your data if this is the problem. Another common symptom is intermittent device failure. So intermittent failures of USB bus powered devices usually happen because the devices draw power from the system's power supply via the USB port. These types of failures, especially for devices with low power draws, such as mice and keyboards, can be an early sign of an overloaded power supply. In that case, you would need to replace the power supply with a higher rated unit. Other intermittent failure issues by way of USB devices or internal devices could be due to damaged cables, connectors, or ports. To troubleshoot these problems, first thing you need to do is turn off the device and replace the data cable with a working replacement. Then you need to turn on the device or the computer. You need to test the device. If the device works correctly, then the problem is solved. If steps one through three do not solve the problem, you need to use the original data cable Then try plugging it into a different internal or external port. Then repeat steps two through three. Then try steps one through four again, but this time use a replacement power connector or AC adapter. When you find the defective component, then the problem should stop. If the problem is not resolved with different data cables, connectors, or power supplies and AC adapters, then the device itself needs to be replaced. Another common symptom is fan spins are no power to other devices. So if a fan spins and a computer never displays any startup messages, you need to check the following. You need to make sure the main ATX and 12 volt ATX or EPS power leads are securely connected to the appropriate sockets. And you need to make sure the CPU and memory modules are securely installed in the appropriate sockets. Indicator light. So an indicator light is a light or LED that prompts the user to the status of a hardware device. And these lights are usually located on the front or top of most desktop computers. If these lights go out, but the system is still working properly, you need to check the indicator lights motherboard connection. Smoke or burning smell. So the sight and or smell of smoke means that your computer has serious issues with its hardware and you need to unplug the computer from the power source immediately. If you see smoke or smell a burning odor with a chemical overtone coming from the power supplies outside vent, your power supply has just died. When a power supply blows up like this, it can also destroy the motherboard, bus powered USB devices connected to the computer and very various other components. Proprietary crash screens are the blue screen of death slash pinwheel. So proprietary crash screens such as the Windows Stop Error, also known as the blue screen of death or BSOD or the Mac pinwheel can be caused by the operating system application or hardware errors. Stop errors can occur either during startup or after a system is running. Regardless of when a stop or a blue screen of death error occurs, the system is halted by default. If the computer does not restart on its own, you must turn off the computer and turn it back on manually. But before you do that, you need to record the error message text and other information so that you can research the problem if it reoccurs. Disintended capacitors. So a capacitor is a component made of two or sets of two conductive plates with a thin insulator between them and wrapped in ceramic and a plastic container. When the capacitor receives a direct current, a positive charge builds up on the plate or the set of plates while a negative charge builds up on the other. Capacitors are used as part of the voltage step down circuits that provide power to the processor. A distended capacitor is what happens to a capacitor when it fails and the flat top bulges out indicating failure. Disintended capacitors can cause system failures and sometimes physical damage to the motherboard. And here is a lovely picture of 
some disintended capacitors so you know what to be on the lookout for. And then finally, let's talk about log errors and error messages. So a computer log is a detailed list of application information, system performance, or other user activities. A log can be useful for keeping track of computer use, emergency recovery, and application improvement. To access logs and error messages, you would simply go to the control panel, administrative views, and the event viewer. So now let's go ahead and get into some of this wonderful check on learning, shall we? The first question is, Bob has had his computer for a while and was just bragging to his friend about how reliable it was. The next morning, he goes to power on his computer and nothing happens. He checks and makes sure all cords are plugged in, but still no luck. What could be the issue? Is it not enough memory to turn on? Is it no power? Is it overheating? Or is it an unexpected shutdown? So Bob got his brand new computer. It's working all fine and dandy. Everything's plugged up. But for some reason, this thing isn't turning on. So what is the problem? The answer is uh, there's no power. Yep, just as simple as that. There is no power getting to this computer. That's why this thing is not turning on. The next question is... John is a data scientist and consistently plays around with large data files on his desktop computer. While trying to pull up one extremely large file, John begins to hear a very loud clicking noise. What could this possibly indicate? Is it a disconnected network connection, mechanical drive failure, read write head that needs cleaning, or faulty hard drive cables. So what is causing this loud clicking noise? The correct answer is uh, he is experiencing mechanical drive failures. And the final question is, Mike loves music and has recently borrowed a USB drive from his friend to copy over a new album. He leaves the USB drive inserted into the computer and shuts it down for the night after he is finished. The next day, he goes to boot up his machine and it displays a message saying operating system not found. What could be the problem? Is it bad RAM, corrupted music file, the operating system not found virus? or the incorrect boot sequence. So what is causing this error? Correct answer is uh, an incorrect boot sequence is causing that error. All right. So in summary, we have talked about troubleshooting common hardware problems that pertain to the motherboard and RAM, CPUs, and power. Now, if you felt like you have gotten something valuable out of this information, go ahead and hit the like button, the share button, drop a comment, but most importantly, subscribe to this channel. Also, go check out my website, Technology G, so that you can get read up on the latest and greatest to help you successfully pass the CompTIA 220. 1001 examination. And until next video, ladies and gentlemen, peace.